Now, one thing I have done, in fact, I'm just about to do, is uh, I've got a the little latch thing that I had. It was just screwed on and it occurred to me that if there was a fire and if this did char appreciably, that latch could fall off and then the doors would swing open, which is uh, no good at all. So I'm going to bolt this through. I've got a little, uh, little stainless steel bolt and a washer and I'll bolt that through, fix it on with a, with a lock nut on this side and that should, uh, that should take care of all that. With the latch bolted on, the sharp edges of the metal were chafing the doors, so I clamped my little belt sander to the bench to make a poor man's linisher and smoothed off the sharp edges of the brass. It worked really well. So I'm going to give this a coat of paint. Um, in fact, it's not a paint, it's a pr clear protective finish. That's part two. This is part one. This is from uh, Envirograph. It's a, it's a protective fire coating. It's not an intumescent paint. Uh, intumescent paints literally swell up to form a, a protective shell. Um, this was, this is a, a, it reduces the spread of flame. It's sort of, I think it's class zero and class one fire retardation. Um, if you wanted to get full UK FD30, you know, 30 minute, fire protection on this, then you could use uh, uh, an intumescent paint that they made. It is quite expensive, it's about 50 quid a pot for a little half litre like this, uh, two you know, primer and a top coat. Um, this is 25, so this has already doubled the budget of the whole, the whole thing. But you know, it's worth doing because uh, there's not much point in having a you know, flame retardant cabinet if the, uh, if the outside starts to, uh, starts to burn. So we're going to apply that and, uh, and then we'll need to leave that for an hour uh, so that it can dry. The coating can be applied with a brush or roller and needs to be worked well into all the joins and edges of all the exposed plywood. Okay, well I think that's the first coat done. We need to wait for that to dry. And while that happens, I think we're just going to have a quick walk around the workshop because there's a few other little things that we can do uh, to help ourselves uh, be more fire aware. Now there's not a lot you can do in a workshop with regard to smoke alarms because uh, obviously they tend to be a little bit too dusty but what you can get are these things. These are heat alarms. They've got a little heat sensitive thing, bit of electronics there. Uh, and they trigger if the temperature rises suddenly. I think the trigger point is about 54 Celsius. Uh, so, you yeah, know, hell of a hot day if, uh, if, if that happens suddenly. Um, and you can get a couple of these, and they're about eight or nine pounds on Amazon. I've got a couple of these, and I'm going to spread these. One in here, because I've got two rooms. Uh, one in each, uh, one of those in each room. Um, I've also got a fire blanket, uh, again, from Screwfix, funnily enough, uh, about sort of, 10, 12 pounds, something like that. Always worth getting if you're in the UK, uh, a British standard kite marked one. Whoops, there we are. Focus. Uh, there's all kinds of cheap and cheerful ones that you can get, but they're not necessarily safe for use. Um, incidentally, if you've ever wondered why fire blankets are only about a metre square or maybe up to four, four feet square, 1200 mil, something like that, um, the, the size of fire you're only supposed to tackle with those is about the size of a wastebasket. I mean, not like a proper big bin, but just like a paper wastebasket. Um, anything bigger than that, and you're, you know, you should really kind of run away and call the people whose job it is to deal with those kind of fires. So yeah, little little fire blanket. I'm going to have one of those here, and also I've got a little dry powder fire extinguisher. It's only a little ones, one kilo. Again, on the basis that. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be tackling sort of large blazers. Um, again, screw fix, about 15 pounds. Uh, great size, comes with a handy little wall mount thing. Uh, and I'm gonna have that, oops, to hand just over there, uh, where we can uh, get at it easily from either room. The fire blanket just hangs off a hook and the extinguisher bracket fixes to the wall with screws and plugs in the usual way. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my ceilings here are pretty solid as the whole thing's built like a car park. Uh, these, uh, this uh, entire building, this part of it, 
was built originally to house uh, oil tanks for the heating system. This this was originally a huge building. Um, so this is really solid, including completely solid ceilings. So I can't really drill into those. So all I'm doing, I'm actually going to glue these up. Dabs of grippy adhesive. And it's going to go about here. And just for while the glue sets, put a strip of tape over that to make sure it doesn't come crashing down. Back at the cabinet we can apply part two of the fire resistant coating, as before working it well into all the corners and the edges so that everything is well covered. Once dry we can refit the latch, then fit the cabinet in place and start to fill it up in a logical and tidy manner. No, it's not going to last is it? So there we are, that's our little uh, paint store more or less completed. As I say, you know, if you wanted it to be fully compliant with FD30 UK regs, use an intumescent paint on that, it'll bump up the cost by a little bit. I think the fire retardant plasterboard that we've lined it with uh, will do uh, a perfectly good job, but you know, if you want it to be fully compliant, then use the intermittent paint and you know, it costs what it costs. I have to say with the weight of the thing <laughs> I begin to realise, beginning to appreciate why uh, all the commercial ones are floor mounted. In fact I may well, as you can see it's pretty full, I may well do a smaller one just to have down here that I can use for longer term storage and maybe keep this as, uh, as just a you know, day to day thing. Um, Again, you know, the, the likelihood of, uh, of a fire happening is very slight. It's probably like uh, serious illness or car crashes. They always happen to other people until they happen to you. And uh, I hope this uh, quick little video has brought home uh, a few home truths. Uh, the, the fire inspection and the fire that was here in London recently have given me a bit of a wake-up call uh, and made me consider, you know, be a bit more aware of, uh, of fire regulations and things like means of escape and uh, I hope they have done with you as well and it doesn't just stop here you know we've got the fire blankets and the alarms and uh, uh, and the extinguisher and this little cabin and all that but actually you also need to be aware of your environment come and have a look the trouble is that by definition we are woodworkers uh, almost inevitably we end up with you know piles of scrap like this I've got them I'm sure you have too. Um, and we just need to be aware of them. I mean, I keep mine by the door because it's convenient, but actually if a fire took hold and if the heat sensors failed and, you know, I couldn't, I wasn't aware of it and couldn't get to my fire extinguishers, blah, 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 blah. If that lot took hold, if that lot caught fire properly, I'd never get out. So I'm going to have to rearrange how this workshop is laid out, actually. I'm going to move that sort of further in board. Um, uh, and you might want to have a walk around your, your workshop, your garage, your shed, whatever you're using with a, as a workshop, and just with a mind to, you know, an adequate means of escape uh, if a fire were to start. Um, hope you've enjoyed this. Well, I don't know if it's enjoyable. I hope you've uh, found this uh, little video useful. I hope you've uh, considered making a little uh, 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 paint store like that. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it amongst your friends and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time and you take care in the workshop. Ta-da.